Hi, my name is Greg Fell. I'm Director of Public Health for Sheffield. This is a situational update for the 24th of February 2021. Firstly, epidemiology, um, the uh, rate of infection um, measured by the seven-day seven day instance is uh, still falling but beginning to settle, um, uh, um, beginning to, to, to plateau and flatline. Um, so uh, as of today, rates are in the order of 120 per 100,000 um, and they've been fairly steady at that for the last few days. That might be a temporary effect or we may see further reductions. It's impossible to uh, tell. So 120 people per 100,000 residents um, are, are given a positive test in any given seven day period. So uh, there, there are 600,000 people or so in Sheffield. So six, to, six times 120. Um, um, the, the rates continue to fall in the elderly. Um, that's obviously great news. Uh, that's the group that are most likely to be seriously ill. Um, encouraging signs with case rates in the elderly um, after the vaccination. Of course, the lockdown um, uh, is having an impact on case rates, no doubts about that. Um, and the elderly are the most cautious um, and the, the most likely to be at home. Um, so that will also have a bearing. Um, but, but increasingly, both nationally and beginning locally, there's, there's, there's lots of encouraging signs of the, uh, the evidence beginning to stack in the way that there was expected, that um, the being vaccinated significantly reduces uh, risk of serious illness and death. And obviously, that's good news for all sorts of reasons. Um, further good news um, is that the vaccination seems to reduce transmission. Um, and again, that was one of the uncertainties a month ago, which plain didn't know that. Um, evidence in both Scotland and England and Israel, where it's a little, little bit ahead of us, is beginning to stack up that being vaccinated reduces the ability to transmit the virus to others. And that's obviously really good from um, an epidemiology perspective and a transmission perspective. Um, still, care is needed. Um, we uh, definitely should avoid enabling unmitigated transmission in the non-vaccinated population. Still significant numbers of people in Sheffield population haven't received first dose, never mind two doses of vaccine. Um, three, three reasons. Um, there's an appreciable risk of hospitalisation. Even in younger people, um, there's still a risk of hospitalisation. We want to avoid that. Um, risk of long COVID. Um, every infection carries the risk of long COVID, and that's a non-trivial risk. And of those uh, of those stories of long COVID I've heard about, it's not something that I would wish on anybody. Um, and finally, there's a risk of mutation. Every time the virus transmits from one person to another, or every time it replicates, actually, um, there's a risk of further mutation. Um, the B117 or the Kent variant is the most dominant in Sheffield. Um, there's no sign yet of the South Africa or the, uh, the Brazilian Manaus variant. That's probably a matter of time. Um, so again, we will be careful and very watchful for that. Um, the Prime Minister's announcement earlier this week, um, uh, the publication of the roadmap out of lockdown restrictions was fabulous news, was long expected. Um, there are four steps um, in total um, um, and for tests that will be taken for each of the four steps. Um, and between each of the four steps coming out of lockdown, we'll, you know, we'll reach step four by summer, um, at the earliest, I think, there'll be a five-week window to assess progress against each of the each of the measures that have been unpicked or released. Um, so the, the, uh, the, the four tests are that the vaccine deployment continues successfully, um, the, there's good evidence that vaccines are being effective in reducing hospitalizations and deaths in those that are vaccinated. And as I say, thus far, that evidence is stacking up quite well. Um, infection rate as they are um, don't risk a surge in hospitalizations that would put unsustainable pressure on the health and social care system. You know, each time we unpick um, a, an element of the lockdown, there will be an upward pressure on infections. There's no two ways about that. Um, uh, and that the government's assessment, the fourth test is the government's assessment, is not fundamentally changed by new variants of concern. Um, uh, and that is an unknown to all of us. So we'll need to bear that bear, bear, bear that one in careful, careful consideration. Clearly, it's great news. Um, but for now, um, I think my ask is that we remember nothing has changed. We are still in lockdown. Um, the first thing that, that will reopen will be schools in early March. That's a good thing. Um, um, but as of today, rates are still high. R is just below one. Every one infection begets at least one, uh, just less than one more infection. So rates are going down quite slowly. 
Um, um, and it's important that everyone continues to follow the rules. And so, so, sorry, we do want a light at the end of this tunnel. Me too. Um, but um, but equally, we don't. There is we don't want another significant surge in infections, and the potential for that is there. So please do continue to stay at home. Please do get a test if you have symptoms um, and and self isolate if needed. Um, what you do has mattered, has made a difference and continues to matter and it helps us all stick to the roadmap so we get back to some semblance of normality as quickly as we can. Um, the vaccination programme um, is going well um, here in Sheffield since the beginning of the vaccination programme we've now vaccinated 160,000, uh, sorry 163,000 um, so uh, and, you know, that's an astounding effort to stick that many needles in that many arms so quickly is undoubtedly an astounding effort. Um, people who are aged 16 to 65 who are clinically vulnerable uh, are defined as having an underlying medical conditions have now started to, they're, they're the next group and have started to receive their first COVID, COVID vaccinations um, in Sheffield last week. Um, in addition, we're also uh, vaccinating those who are 65 to 69 year olds. So those are the next two cohorts that we're focusing attention on. And this is going really, really quickly, actually. Um, so undoubtedly, it's the biggest vaccination programme the NHS has ever ever undertaken. The whole of the city, all of the agencies in the city across the, the council, the NHS and the voluntary and community sector and the faith sector is supporting that. Um, it's a big, big effort and will take some time to get through um, uh, all of the intended vaccination cohort. Um, please um, don't call your GP to inquire about when your turn will come. You will be asked. Um, um, it's worth me saying that we have started vaccinating new cohorts of patients, but if you're over 70 um, or are in the clinically extremely vulnerable group defined as the shielders or are a frontline health and social care worker that haven't yet had the vaccine for whatever reason, um, it's not too late. Um, you can call now to book a vaccination appointment online or call the free phone number on 119 and the details will be available at the end of the uh, end of the video. Lastly from me, where next? Um, so um, nationally, the Office of National Statistics data um, is still showing nationally that the rates are coming down reasonably quickly and no tailing off nationally, which is good news. So um, we, we may start to go down again in Sheffield. Um, the, the symptom trackers, most commonly the Zoe app, um, um, is beginning to show that the decline is, is tailing off. It's not the strongest data, but it is data. We take that quite seriously. Um, and as I say, looking at the over 80s case rate data, um, that's beginning to fall off faster, thus a good indication that the vaccination is doing what we all hoped it would be. Um, we will be pursuing um, the same strategy as we've uh, had almost from the start. Um, the, 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 yeah, the basic um, public health and hygiene measures, washing your hands, keeping a distance, wearing your face mask, um, those will be in place for some time because there's still a lot of infection around. Um, um, uh, I'd like to be pursuing a zero COVID strategy, but, we, but it's probably unattainable. So we're pursuing the lowest possible rate that we can get to. Um, the, the, the end, the, the end is probably a long way in, a long way off. I'm sorry to say, um, it will be when we've got very, very low community transmission measured by the seven day infection rate. Currently, as I say, it's about, um, 100 to 120 per 100,000. Last summer it was 20 to 0 per 100,000. So it's a good way to go there. Um, um, R is well below one currently. It's just below one and a well vaccinated population. Clearly that will come, um, quite soon. So, um, the roadmap has much to welcome. It gives us really gives us light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but we will be living with COVID, I think, for some considerable time to come. So when we get to the uh, the, the stage four of the roadmap, um, when we can fully reopen society, there will still be some measure of public health interventions because we will still be living with COVID for some time to come. So um, I don't want to end on a note of doom and gloom. Um, I think it's important I end on the note of realism, um, but collective action has made a difference, continues to make a difference, and I think we will be in that space for some time to come. So thank you to Sheffielders for your continued efforts, because it really, really does make a difference.